Just for the record, I am not one of the Dixie Hummingbirds. <laughs> but it's, it's my pleasure to be here tonight. I've been associated with the Hummingbirds since I first became mayor. For those younger people in the audience, that was, nine, that was, that was 1992. 1992. Then I became governor in 2000 and in 2003. And we gave the first Governor's Awards for Performing Arts to the Hummingbirds. And then, two years later, myself and Mayor Street had the honor of renaming part of Poplar Street, one of the main arteries in Philadelphia, Dixie Hummingbirds Way. And as I said this morning at the press conference, I said the Hummingbirds have been a true Philadelphia treasure. They've been great ambassadors for the city, but they're also a great American treasure, and they've been great ambassadors for our wonderful country as well. So it's with great pride that I say, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Dixie Hummingbirds. For the rap, hip hop, disco, punk, funk, metal, soul, motel, rockabilly, country and western, before bebop, doo wop, and the big band swing, there was the Dixie Hummingbirds. The mighty Dixie Hummingbirds. The Dixie Hummingbirds. They personify perseverance, talent, and dedication. The Dixie Hummingbirds are indeed an American cultural institution. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the gentleman of song, the legendary Dixie Hummingbirds. How's everybody doing tonight? Let me ask you something, Philadelphia. Did y'all come to have a good time tonight? I can't hear you. Did you come to have a good time tonight? What about y'all over there? If you came to have a good time, let me hear you say, yeah! No, y'all ain't got it. What about y'all right here? Let me hear you say, yeah! What about y'all up there? Let me hear you say something. I think they ready now, Brother Bang. Put your hands together. Come on, y'all clap just like that. Do that for me. There you go. Listen, well, the way down south where we came from, in the land of the good sunshine, there's a little bird that flies around, humming all the time. One day in the spring, while the birds were humming, James B. Davis overheard And he decided he would name his group The Dixie Hummingbird So we've been singing for the masses Ever since we were in our teens You know what? We've been riding down the highways And all of our pockets clean Say, who are we? The Dixie Hummingbird The Dixie Hummingbird Well, the road was rough and the going was tough But her we managed to sing every now and then Most of the time when we were running a program We always run into Slim, you know Slim could be the difference <laughs> In a meal or maybe none And you know what else? Slim is when you look for 300 people But you don't see but 21 But we've been a singing for the master <laughs> Ever since we were in our team We were riding down the highways And all of our pockets clean who are we? The Dixie Hummingbird. The Dixie Hummingbird. Oh, who well, oh, we love to sing. We love to sing. We love to sing. We love to sing. We love to sing here and there and uh, everywhere. We've been singing for nine long years and may sing at least ten more. And all we want to do is sing the songs that you enjoy. 
thought you might enjoy that little bit of history of how it all got started. And oh. now, we would like to tell you who we are. These men behind us are the reason that we're here. And what we'd like to do is introduce ourselves and introduce the men that we channel as well. Carlton? This gentleman behind me is the reason why all of us are here. He was a 13-year-old kid, basically that joined the group in 1938. And he dedicated his life to this group. I had the privilege of meeting him and knowing him all of my life. My, they were, the Dixie Hummingbirds were always friends of my family. And this young man would stay in our house when they would come to work in Indianapolis, Indiana. I saw him when I was four years old. And when I saw him jump off the stage and work with Mr. Walker, I said to myself then, I want to do that for the rest of my life. And who would have thought 36 years later I would be standing on the shoulders of Mr. Ira Tucker Sr. My name is Carlton Lewis III from Indianapolis, Indiana. The young man behind me is James Davis. Started the group in 1928. That's a long time. 90 years, 90 years, people. James Davis was the founder. James Davis was the reason why we are here also. James Davis was the glue to this situation. James Davis was the enforcer. Mm -hmm. Didn't play, Then was no joke. He had a crazy <laughs> fine book that used to find everybody when you mess up. <laughs> My name is Tori Nettles, the tenor singer. Been with the group since 2008. I love it. Wouldn't replace it for anything at all. This gentleman behind me is Mr. James Walker. He was the second lead of the Dixie Hummingbirds. When him and Tuck worked their magic, everything phenomenal happen. My name is Troy Smith, and I've been with the group for two years. Good evening, everybody. This young man right here is Beachy Thompson. Beachy was an unusual tenor. Beachy stood out, and he stood strong. Beachy was a lyric tenor. Um, my name is Roy Smith, and I've been with the group for what? Two days. A year and a half. Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go next, man. Go ahead, man. This gentleman here that stands behind me is Mr. Howard Carroll, one of the most phenomenal guitarists of all time that ever lived. And a lot of the music that you hear today is based off of a lot of the riffs and different arrangements that he put together alongside his fellow, you know, his fellow comrades, uh, the Hummingbirds. And I am so honored just to be able to fill those shoes, which is really gigantic shoes. My name is Lyndon Baines Jones, and I've been with the group for 18 years.
Good evening, my name is Ira Tucker, Jr. And I can't tell you how proud I am to be here tonight because I'm not really a singer. <laughs> but I managed to squeeze in here. Now, this guy behind me, for all of you who don't know, this was a powerful force. One of the most powerful forces ever in the history of bass singing for gospel music. His name was William Bobo. And Mr. Bobo was quite a Bobo <laughs> because he bassed, but he pumped bass. And he did things as far as the bass singer is concerned that a lot of other bass singers couldn't do. It was because he started out as a tenor. And one night coming home from work in Spartanburg, South Carolina in the middle of a snowstorm, he almost froze to death. They had to take him to the hospital. And two days later, he had this huge bass voice. <laughs> and all we could say was well, we was glad that he got caught in the storm because it worked for us. My name is Ira Tucker Jr. and I thank you all for being here. And it's a blessing to see you all here tonight. Thank you. The Hummingbirds did everything they could do to sustain their legacy, to train these men here, not me, but these men, how to create that sound. Their good deeds will not be forgotten. And so we're going to do this song now in tribute to those who made us all, made it possible for all of us to be here. Your good deeds. Oh, your good deeds will live on when you In need or alone Well, whatever you do for him God knows you'll be pleasing him And your good deeds will live on When you're gone And your good deeds will live on 
When you're gone, let's say that one more time, boys. Thank you. You know, we um, have had some great people in this group. And none has ever put in as much time and energy and really meant what he was doing. He, he really loved singing. And I'm talking about a member that we lost a year ago. And his name was William Bright. And I think he's up here on this screen. That's Mr. Bright. We miss him a lot. And I think all of the fellows wanted to say a little something about Mr. Bright. Carl? When I came into the group in 2003, Bright was the trainer. Bright had to get us ready and get us palatable so that Mr. Tucker could build us up. And I always kind of felt like Bright didn't like me. <laughs> Bright and I had so many little ups and downs in the beginning but I grew to love Bright and Bright I believe loved me and before it was all said and done Bright and I was working a tandem just like Mr. Tucker and Mr. Walker you couldn't ask for a better brother, better group mate better friend, better confidant than Mr. Bright and the day we lost Bright I felt like I lost one of my best friends and I just want him to know tonight that everything we do on stage tonight is not just for Pop Nim, but Bright, this is for you. God bless you. God rest you. For me, Mr. Bright and me, that was my ace boon coon. <laughs> we used to call Mr. Bright not so bright all the time. <laughs> Mr. Bright was my ace. He was my buddy. He was a friend. Mr. Bright was the one who, when you hit a wrong note, Mr. Bright let you know, that ain't how the note go, that ain't how it go. Get it right, get it right. But they used to always say, you on the mountain. On the mountain mean you hit the wrong note. But I miss Mr. Bright, I love Mr. Bright, and I wish he was still here. My finest memory of Mr. Bright was, we was preparing to do a show in Washington, D.C. at the Smithsonian Museum. And I didn't know him that long, but the time that I did know Mr. Bright was I learned that he had an affectionate smile and uh, he had a beautiful spirit. So that's my memory with Mr. Bright. I didn't know Mr. Bright very long, but uh, one day I was going to the Dixie Hummingbirds rehearsal and I guess one of the fellows, they, they, wouldn't, they didn't show up. So I told him I could fill in, I could do a part. And uh, he said, um, well, well, what part do you sing? And I told him, I said, well, what part do you want? <laughs> then he kind of looked at me a little strange. And I, I looked, I said, oh no, I'm in trouble. And then he said, that's just what I want to hear. If you ever want to sing with the Dixie Hummingbirds, you have to know all the parts. So that was my finest memory of Mr. Bright. I've known, I knew Bright when he wore process. Some of you might know what that means. <laughs> But I met Bright when he was me. You see, Bright sang with a group called the Sons of the Dixie Hummingbirds. And people used to think 
that because he was dark skinned that he must be Tucker's son. So I heard about this other Tucker son. <laughs> so I go to the Met as a poor program and I saw him. And they said, there's Tucker's son over there with the process. <laughs> and I walked over and I said, hey, are, are you Ira Tucker Jr.? And he said, are you? <laughs> that started a long relationship for a very long time. And I miss Mr. Bright. His last concert was at the Kimmel Theater. And that was where he got a standing ovation. And a week later, he died. So I just want to say, I wish you were here, brother. I miss you. When I first come to the group, we had a, a rehearsal on a Thursday night. And uh, when I came in, Mr. Bright was the welcoming force that welcomed me into the group that night. He welcomed me with open arms and he always had a very nice smile and, and, and he always had something funny to say. And um, one of his words that he would say when there's a song that actually went really good in rehearsal or on a show, he would say, Brother Baines, that was a monster. And I was like, you are right, Mr. Bright. That was a monster. But I miss him so much, and, you know, he, he meant a whole lot to me. He was a very guiding force in all of our training as we was coming up, you know, under Mr. Tucker, and you just miss him so much. And he will be missed, and that's my buddy, Mr. Bright. Let's give Mr. Bright a hand. The next song is one of Mr. Bright's songs that we're going to do. It's called Born Again. Y'all put your hands together for Brother Roy. Roy? <laughs> Y'all having a good time? Are you having a good time? All right. Let me hear you over there. Let me hear you back there. Amen. I'm glad you're having a good time. I just want to say, you can feel free to clap your hands, pat your feet. Let's have a little church. What you say? <laughs> Brother Bang. One day I told the Lord, he would say, and fill me with the Holy Lord. I said, Lord. I'll pray your name wherever I may be. If you would say, my soul set me free.
years I've heard it never known I would get a chance to sing it and I am honored to do it and with the Dixie Hummingbirds my lord what a, what a great pleasure the night I recorded uh, morning train with the hummingbirds uh, I was a little nervous because I sing gospel but I mean when you're singing a masterpiece you have to do a masterful job so I called on the master when I, I prayed before I sang, and I said, Lord, you got me in this position. Well, he said, I'm in a lot of positions. And I said, you got me in this position to sing it. Let me sing it for your glory. And what happened that day was the Lord singing with me, through me. And uh, I heard stuff I didn't know I could do. So I know it was a blessing from God. I'm going home on the morning train. I don't want to go this early, though. But <laughs> when it comes time, I want to be on the morning train because the midnight train might be too late. Home on the morning train. Money.
fortunate to work with Kappa students, uh, high school students from the School of Creative Arts. And I'll tell you, they have some very talented children there. And they are Philadelphia's finest. They really are. And we've been involved with Kappa now for a while. We are planning to uh, give up some money on our tour to Cap. And we, we did a song, we did an album rather, uh, called GPS, which is our, our release. Um, it's on a limited edition, but it, it'll be released for our 90th anniversary. But those kids came in there and, and they, like, like Buddy Sickler said, they did a masterful job. And I just want you to hear some of the things that they had to say about their experience. And this is for them, a lot of them, it was the first time they'd ever been in a studio, it was the first time they'd ever put on a set of uh, headsets and played music and have it recorded. But I think you can feel the joy and the appreciation that they had. Hi, I'm Lizzie Davis. I'm one of the co-producers of this project with the Dixie Hummingbirds. And I brought some of the students from the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts to participate in this project. Uh, I'm always looking for opportunities for them, and I thought this would be a great experience. And they're seemingly having a wonderful time. Hi, I am Nanette Foley, the orchestra, string orchestra, and string quartet director here at the High School for Creative and Performing Arts. And my students, and Ms. Davis and I, arranged the Love of God, the string orchestra ensemble version to go with the Dixie Hummingbirds song. We very rarely get a chance to work with such a high quality group and not just a performing group but a non-classical group which we are very classically trained here and for my students to get a diversity of musical experiences is absolutely fabulous and lo and behold we have this wonderful opportunity to then go into a recording studio and to perform with them but to have them all there and to get to meet them and for my students to not just to get to record in a studio which was the first time I think all of them had been in there but it's so different from performing live in classical music that really to do take after take and to listen back and to get feedback from professional musicians uh, was really a fabulous thing for them. My name is Jordan Thomas. I am a graduate of the High School for Creative and Performing Arts of the class of 2009. I'm a current sophomore at the Peabody Institute of Music of Johns Hopkins University. It was my first time professionally recording with the group and they were so warm, they're so friendly. It was a piece of cake. It was eating a cake that was just made in the oven and you eat it and the icing just melts in your mouth. It was like that. It took less than an hour and it was a pleasure playing with them. It's such a great experience. They're such an inspiration to me. And having the time to spend with them was unbelievable. They're such a great group and I hope in the near future to perform with them again. Hi, my name is Devin Edmonds. Uh, I'm a 2010 Kappa graduate. 
and I play trombone on the morning train for the Dixie Hummingbirds. Work with my um, old friends and you know some new friends. It was it was really fun. You know I hope I hope they call me again sometime. You know I, just, I can't wait to the album comes out. I can't wait to listen to it. Hi, my name is Jeremy Cohen and I'm a Kappa graduate and I play trombone. Last August, a week before I went to college, Miss Davis called me and asked me to record music with the Dixie Hummingbirds. I was really excited because I'd never had the chance to record anything before in a studio. It was a great experience and I really hope that the Dixie Hummingbirds call me again to play. That's an amazing getting to work with uh, artists of this caliber in this field of music. Uh, I mean, I never thought it would take me like years and years to get to work with anybody with any kind of standing in the music industry. But I mean, at age 17, to get to work with people that are this good at what they do, it's just incredible. I mean, uh, it's a privilege, it's an honor, it's a treat. It's everything you could have hoped for. Working with the Dixie Hummingbirds is one of the greatest things I've ever had. Um, it was just, uh, it was sort of like on short notice, but it was a blessing from God and stuff. Um, I'm a really spiritual, per spiritual person, and like God has really blessed me with this opportunity. And Lord knows I prayed for it, so like, this is His answer in my prayer. I believe that as a young person who just graduated from the high school for creative and performing arts, um, I feel that being at such a young age and being able to perform with the Dixie Hummerbirds uh, was one of the greatest young experiences of my life. Yeah, working with the Dixie Hummingbirds, it's, it's a really great opportunity for me. And it's really, really prolonging me to play my trumpet and practice and get really well. I mean, because sooner or later, I, I want to like, be as good as they are. And just like, chill out and play my trumpet and make all these great hits. And like, all of this is really just inspiring me to just go on with everything I'm doing right now with my trumpet and my, my school so I can like, become more professional. And it really helped me bring out what I'm trying to say through my trumpet. And playing with them is just, it's a great opportunity and a pleasure. Let's hear it for Kappa. You know, the hummingbirds have had a lot of friends throughout their career, but no one more dear than Paul Simon. Paul Simon, I'm sure he'll appreciate that. <laughs> Paul Simon came to the Hummingbirds with a song called Loves Me Like a Rock. And that song went on to give Paul a Grammy nomination. The Hummingbirds recorded it on their own and they also got a Grammy nomination, but the Hummingbirds won the Grammy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, loves me like a rock. When I was a little boy, just a boy. and the devil would call when my name, I was just a boy. Say who do, who do you think you're fooling? I'm, just a boy. I'm a consecrated boy. I'm just a boy. Singing in the Sunday choir. Mama loves me, she loves me. I was going to be a man, and the devil would call my name. I say, who do, who do you think you're fooling? I'm a consummated man. That's such a little purity. My mother loves me, she loves me. Cause that on her knees and hug me. Oh, she
I was the president, was the president. and the Congress would call my was name. The yeah. I'd say, Who do you? Who, who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think? song is also about love. It's called Love Your Fellow Man. Give him 
praise Yeah, when you find he's understanding Look him to me in his way Ladies and gentlemen, have you enjoyed yourself so far? Oh, I really don't believe that. Have you enjoyed the ride so far? Come on, do me one more favor. Have you enjoyed the ride so far? Well, why don't we keep on riding? Will that be all right? Y'all want to keep on riding? On up the King's Highway. We're gonna take a little ride in the Christian automobile. Y'all put your hand together while we do it. Oh, you know that every, every child of God is running for Jesus. Every child of God is running for Jesus.
a little Bible story a little Bible story about how Jesus took two little fish five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 folk and then after he did that you know what he did Jesus walked the water how many of y'all know that and do you know that if he can walk the water and calm the raging sea don't you know he can do that same thing in your life I wish I had some Bible readers that could be a witness don't you know he can do it Yep. Brother Bain Well Now once the mighty Savior
Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we truly, we truly hope that you have enjoyed what we, the Dixie Hummingbirds of the day, have been able to bring to you tonight. Y'all enjoyed yourself? Now some of y'all done sat in here and ain't moved all night. I don't believe that. Have y'all enjoyed yourself? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I see you, sister. God bless you. I see you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I want to bring back Brother Roy. He's going to close us out tonight. Roy, come here. Come here, buddy. Roy ain't been with us that long. But this is my buddy. This is my partner. This is my friend. I heard you. You didn't get my husband. I heard you. <laughs> That's your cousin. All right, cousin. <laughs> I think Roy's doing a mighty fine job. When we, when we lost Mr. Bright, we really felt like we lost a giant, and we did. God in heaven knows we did. And Bright was so special, it took two folks to replace him. It took two twin brothers. We got our own gospel version of the whispers, y'all. Broad, take us home tonight, buddy. Yes, sir. Amen. Y'all gonna help me out? Yeah. All right now, y'all can sing along with me. Brother Baines. Come on, clap your hands. Be there. Let 
Another witness. 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 Another witness.